This week's word, urea, letter U. It's only appropriate. What the heck is urea? So it is basically a waste product of any living organism. It is predominantly found in your pee or your urine. And as we know from weeks, week four's letter D, digestive tract, proteins, which is one of the three macronutrient categories, remember we have fats, carbohydrates, and proteins, Proteins like Greek yogurt, meat, um, edamame, fish, anything like that, those are broken up into smaller micromolecules known as amino acids. So there are two primary steps involved in the breakdown of taking proteins to amino acids. So the first is that proteins contain nitrogen. It is the same nitrogen that's found on the periodic table and what happens is the nitrogen is basically snipped off from the proteins and that nitrogen is further broken down into one of four things. So it's either energy, water, carbon dioxide, or ammonia. Ammonia is actually extremely toxic so we obviously cannot have it just floating around in our bodies. So our genius bodies have basically evolved to be able to get rid of the ammonia during this protein to amino acid breakdown. And this process is accurately called the urea cycling process. What happens is that the ammonia is converted into a much safer form called urea, hence this week's word. While urea is still safer than ammonia, it is still technically a waste, meaning that we need to get it out of our body, so our body does that by peeing. Therefore, our pee is basically a combination of 95% water, 2% urea, and the other 3% is usually creatine, zinc, magnesium, some sort, some form and nice cocktail of other electrolytes. So, what badass organs are in charge of this urea cycling process? Well, of course, it's the liver and the kidneys. The liver is basically in charge of, basically, you can think of the liver as the scissors that are snipping the nitrogen off and converting it to, again, energy, water, carbon dioxide, or ammonia. And then you can thank the kidneys for being in charge of filtering out the remnants of ammonia and the toxic forms of urea to pee. So you're probably wondering, Katie, why does my pee smell all the time? Well, your diet can actually affect both the color and the smell of your pee. So types of foods that can affect the color for sure are beets, berries, fava beans, science of the lands. Um, and so as urea sits out or goes stale, so like when you pee something out or like that awesome smell that you get wafting in the air as soon as you enter a porta potty, like at that awesome music festival or job site or whatever the hell you are peeing in porta potties maybe like a race a 5k maybe that's more appropriate the environmental bacteria that's floating in the air or like sitting in the toilet bowl or the toilet seat is actually in charge of reconverting that urea back to ammonia so that is really that very pungent nasty smell that you get right Okay, if you take one thing away from today's video, it is that you should never hold your pee. So long story, kind of long slash short. Peeing and urination is a very complex process that essentially involves your bladder and your kidneys sending messages up to the brain once it's full, which is usually between one to two cups of pee. So your kidneys and your bladder will send messages up your vagus nerve to your brain being like, hey, I'm full, I need to be, we need to be emptied. So the brain then says, hell yeah, let me open the floodgates right up. So essentially if you are allowing your pee, which again contains urea and all of these toxic wastes, if you're holding it and you're not allowing your brain to release those floodgates, you're basically allowing all that bacteria and those wastes to just sit in your bladder and that can cause severe. I have another fun fact coming at you. So can anyone tell me why girls get more UTIs than guys? Well, you can think of the urethras as like the water slides that essentially connect your bladder to the outside world. So the urethra, while it is an awesome water slide, the water is actually pee. So the urethras are basically pee slides that connect 
your bladder to the outside world. That is how our pee gets your urethras than guys, meaning that our pee gets emptied out faster, but that also means that bacteria can crawl up there even faster as well. So it is sometimes hypothesized that since protein contains nitrogen and again, remember in the protein metabolism, the nitrogen is snipped off. And since ammonia is actually derived from nitrogen is thought sometimes hypothesized that excessive protein consumption diets might actually be a potential cause for a sloth like liver or sloth like kidney behavior. So horrible uh, filtration, I guess, disorders, or even kidney stones, severe UTIs, inability to filter out or determine what good waste versus bad waste are. This is because the liver and the kidney get overwhelmed trying to weed out all that ammonia from the hefty amounts of protein in the grub that you're consuming. So I do want to make it very clear that I, I obviously always recommend high protein consumption, but we are talking about like excessive protein consumption. So I want to make it very clear, high protein diet should not be demonized. And in fact, the recommendation for muscle tone maintenance and increased performance is to actually consume one gram of protein per one kilogram of body weight. So let's say you weigh 165 pounds, that's 75 kilograms. So that would mean that the recommendation for you to maintain and build muscle, also ligament healing, recovery, etc. Again, if you weigh 75 kilograms is to consume 75 grams of protein per day. 